Hey guys, Dante here and welcome back to my channel, The Burger Thought. So, what is today's video about? Well, today's video is about a project I have been working on for nearly 15 years. And you're thinking to yourself, man, how lazy can this guy be? Very lazy. But in truth, what I'm talking about is an idea that I've been adding to for the past 15 years. So, let's step back for a minute. Step back way back. It is the year 2002-ish. I'm in high school and I'm sitting down with a bunch of friends in our cafeteria with three tables pulled together and we're just chatting about numerous things, topics are flying back and forth. And around that time, I uh, begin to drift away and I start thinking about one of my favorite video games. The video game is Metal Slug. Now, Metal Slug is an awesome game, was, still is, go pick it up if you can. That is essentially a simple uh, side-scrolling, platforming, running gun, right? Nothing new in terms of mechanics. It's the same thing you get from a lot of running gun games where you just pick up items, you shoot, you fight the bad guy, you pump quarters into that arcade machine and you hope you survive. Uh, but what it was about that game that I loved so much and I still do is the artistic side of it. Just your artistic construction of it. From the background art to the character art to the bosses, to the creative nature of each stage. And of course, it, it's all wrapped in this beautifully done pixel artwork. Very good pixel artwork. So I'm there, just sketching in my sketchbook, as you would, talking to my fellow LaGuardians. And I draw something kind of inspired from the game. It's the, uh, the, the grenade that, that they toss. And I end up drawing this. It's a can. It's a can with a wind-up gear. And like I said, it was kind of inspired by the game, but what it really inspired by is those old World War II uh, grenades that were pretty much a uh, can on a stick. So I sit there and I end up drawing this can with a wind-up gear, and I thought, man, wouldn't it be interesting if, like, the wind-up gear Wind it like three times and it gives you three seconds. Wind it up ten times and it gives you ten seconds. What if that was the grenade? And thus was the very first concept drawing for my video game, The Clockwork Queen. Now some of you who might view this channel will remember this drawing I did a while back. This right here is Princess Springlock Mechanica Copper Heart the First. Now uh, Princess Spring is the uh, protagonist. She is the hero the heroine of the game. Uh, she was in fact the second picture I ever drew. It was uh, the can and then her. And she's gone through some revisions. And it was just a fun idea. I just started drawing. And to be honest, to everyone out there who's ever wondered, how do you come up with such good ideas? How do you come up with these great drawings or even crappy drawings that have good ideas behind them or vice versa? That's what it really is. Just do it. You're not sure? Draw a circle on a page. Come back to it two months later. And draw another circle on another circle. And I have Mickey Mouse. Whatever. Just do it. And that's what I did. I knew nothing about video games. I knew no one who could help me with programming, sprite work, none of that. But I had an idea. Every so often I'll add another drawing and another drawing. I'll add a villain and then I'll add a, a, a concept for a stage. What if the first stage is all mountainsides? What if the second stage is the water stage? And essentially, over the course of nearly 15 years, I realized I have almost the entire game laid out. Many of these sketches, by the way, you can check out on my DeviantArt and Instagram. But I went back into my sketchbooks, and I had tons of sketchbooks. Took them and went through every single sketchbook, from high school to now, from 2002 to now. And about three years ago, I combined them into this, a kind of a portfolio slash series bible. I took all the sketches and I organized them based on the stages. I took all the villains and I organized them based on uh, basic villain, mini boss, final boss. 
and I put it together to this. And I've taken this to several conventions. Whenever I have a table, I take it to the conventions. And I've met numerous individuals who are entering the field of individual, uh, individual, uh, rather independent uh, game making. I've had a few people ask, hey, if there's any voice acting you need, we're voice actors. Here's my card. And that's what you should do. So much like my video I did about uh, two or three videos ago regarding how I design my card games, the ups and downs, the good and bad. I'm going to give you my advice on how you could do video games too. Luckily with video games, unlike tabletop games, we kind of already have a basis. We have some place to start with. Tabletop games, video, tabletop games are different from video games because tabletop games, you sometimes want to try a new mechanic. You want to try to create your own rules. And yes, you could just copy Monopoly in terms of how the game plays. You could just copy um, Cards Against Humanity. And there's a lot of games that do that. It's the exact same mechanic. Uh, but video games already have that for you. Like I said, you already have the idea of what is a side scroller? What is a running gun? What is a puzzle game? You know, match three like Candy Crush. You kind of already have those. What are fighting games? What are the types of characters in fighting games? So that is kind of easy. Unless you're trying to completely take the market and flip it on its head and create a game that's family friendly, first person shooter with unique movement, movement mechanics. And that's where you get Splatoon. My case, I wasn't looking to be too unique in the gameplay. Just something that was fun and intriguing. So I focused, in my case, completely on the aesthetic. All the sketches, everything in here. Uh, I have yet to do the sprite work. I hope to eventually get to that part. But before I do, I still got a few things to top off in this portfolio. And that's what I'm going to show you today. That's the fun thing I'm going to show you people. So uh, essentially, I wanted the final stage, the final boss to be something epic. So I decided, why not a mech? Why not have uh, your heroes fight a mech, fight inside of a mech? So the final stage of Clockwork Queen, without giving too much away, is essentially you scaling the different levels of this kind of Da Vinci Renaissance mech made of a uh, stone wall and gears and... Uh, bellows you would find in a fireplace and just springs and chains and all this weird stuff and it's all broken up into different uh, sections all of which I'll put into here eventually uh, the sections are so far the belly of the beast um, the heart of evil and then whatever I'm, whatever I'm gonna call the head uh, and I'm gonna show you right now this drawing which is the main concept for the belly of the beast. So here is our belly. Or rather a static, a static image of it. And um, let's let, you know what, let's take our clockwork queen, or soon to be clockwork queen once she beats the villain, drop her into a silhouette and then drop her right here. So now you get a, a sense of scale. These are the things you have to do when thinking of a video game. How big is your character? What is the background? Where do they stand in relation to it? All the small details you don't really think about until you have to get your hands dirty. So she stands right there on this uh, kind of steel crossbeam in the, f in, the, uh, in the foreground. Now if you notice, there's a number of objects in the back that are highlighted in blue. But we'll get to those in just a moment. But first, let's talk about the stage layout. I wanted it to once again resemble this mechanical gut, if you would. So you have your liver, you have your stomach, you have your small intestine made out of twisting pipes, you have your large intestine, and then you have your, your, your exit point. You have the exit point. But anyway, I went through several sketches, and even this might not be the final layout, but I wanted to have the player get a sense of how the world works, even if, it all, even if it is all fictional. Now, going back to everything highlighted in blue, in many uh, games, uh, as far back as, let's say, Mario, you have your foreground where the character walks back and forth and you have your villains on the foreground. In 
many modern games, such as Metal Slug, you have the same layout. However, for this one, I wanted something to be a bit more unique. So in this game, especially when you're reaching the final climax of the game, you're going to have objects that interact from the background into the foreground. That is what all these blue objects are. I feel doing things like this just kind of makes the world become more alive. You can have all the cool backgrounds and stuff moving around, but if, if you feel everything's just a flat mat, then your character kind of feels separated from it. So the idea that these things can easily go from mundane, uh, non-aggressive backgrounds to suddenly attacking you in the foreground it's stuff I really love. And Metal Slug would do that later on in some of their setups. Um, and sometimes they would just have like a little cinematic stuff happening in the background. And then it just translates into new villains in the foreground. So I took this still image. And after jumping through multiple hoops with multiple programs that all failed on me at one point, I was able to make a short animation kind of demonstrating how I feel the stage will play out. Essentially, you have a tell, a hint that something's happening, a noise, a movement, then followed by the attack, which is a mechanic in a game you should have. Players should be able to see things coming, but the real trick of it is throwing it so fast at them that they have to react. If you don't do that, and things just fly out at your characters in a video game, it feels cheap. If you can't tell where something is coming from and you have no way of reacting to it in time, people don't have fun. And that's something I want to avoid. So enough jibber jabber. Let me jump back into the animation and let me show you how it all plays out. And that's that right there, guys. Uh, as mentioned before, as you're playing this stage and objects are flying at you, you'll also be attacked by smaller villains, um, the evil Vikings that attack you in the game. The Vikings of the Horned Skull, as I call them. Um, as well as a, no a number of smaller mechanical little creatures that run across the stage. Uh, but once again, that's just me planning stuff ahead, which is what you should do as well. If you're not sure, where the hell to get started? If you don't feel you have the skill needed, if you feel you're taking too long, don't worry, as long as you keep going. Keep adding to your ideas, keep filling those books with tons of sketches, tons of sketches and concepts. Don't worry if something doesn't work. Don't hold on to stuff too long, or rather too tightly, because maybe you do a design when you first start and it changes later. Princess Spring has gone through several design changes for several different reasons. That is part of life. Don't give up, keep going. And once again, if you're interested in seeing more of this topic, check out my DeviantArt page, my Instagram, uh, even my Twitter. All the links are down below in the description. And let me know what you think of this. Tell me if you like the idea of playing as the princess, rather than rescuing her. The idea of the heroine, whose kingdom is in peril, now becoming the hero. But no matter what, keep creating, keep thinking, and keep pushing that imagination beyond uh, what people feel is appropriate. Because that's what this all comes down to. This project of mine, I'm, I don't know if I'll ever make it into a game, but I'm not going to stop adding to it. And maybe someone out there might want to join me on this weird ride. And I hope this inspires you, and I hope it kind of gives you an insight as to just what steps might be taken and more importantly knowing that a schmuck like me could come up with an idea like this 
A schmuck like you could do the same thing. But anyway, guys, once again, I am Dante. Like, favorite, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Later. If you liked this video, be sure to check out my other works on my YouTube channel. And also be sure to follow me on these social media websites. Links in the description down below.